this is Molly Storm from Stowe, Ohio, and you're listening to Barbecue Sense. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me. Fine. How's it going? <laughs> you have a great show. I'm a big fan. Boing. So what, what, what seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the, in the crackle. Charbono. It's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? He ate two for wiener. But listen, Laverne, you shit feast. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seed. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. <laughs> top men. And just like that, we are into the second hour. You are either watching or listening to the Barbecue Central Show. We talk about the most high-level items in the barbecue and grilling industry that have transpired over the course of the week or weeks, depending on what the news cycle is doing with them or what kind of opinions I am going to be creating and disseminating out to the general public. I saw this earlier. I don't know if anybody else is even thought about doing this our pal smoking joe's pit barbecue crank that smoker to 600 degrees that turkey will be ready in one hour and 10 minutes Uh really joe i don't know how many smokers get to 600 degrees i think joe has a yoder's So if you remove the heat diffuser off the burn pot, then you can probably roll the 600 degrees. I think the Oklahoma Joe Ryder DLX pellet cooker that I have, uh, and that's the the 1250 or the 1300, uh, that can get up to 600, 650 because you can move the smoke slash sear handle in the middle over to the sear portion where you get direct access to the firebox and that'll get you towards 600. That seems like an awfully high temperature to do a turkey. But I'm not questioning you. It just is a break from the norm. So that might be another reason why we have Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue on the show, not the least of which is to track how the food trailer is going because a month or so ago, Joe opened up a food trailer, barbecue trailer out there. Still to come on the show this evening in about 12 minutes from now. And for those two segments, the embedded correspondence. Doug Scheiding is already in the green room. We'll wait for John to load in. And, of course, Rusty as well. What are we going to be talking about tonight? Well, we will have a round of 100% surety questions, which everybody loves. And then also we will talk about the McRib sandwich. If you can believe it, I voluntarily went to McDonald's, which I haven't been to in forever, and got a McRib, and it felt dirty and sleazy. I needed to shower after it for a number of reasons, but we will all give our take on the McRib, how delicious it was, how non-delicious it was, what was good about it, what was bad about it. It's on its farewell tour, as we all know. So we'll talk about that, and then we will also... Talk about the Beyond Meat seared steak tips. That might be more of a issue on conversation, but we'll all come to find out about it here in about 15 minutes from now as we work into the surety questions. By the way, if you are somebody that likes to take part in the surety questions, there's a couple people in the clubhouse room there. Uh, Be ready to go if you want to do it, or if you are listening through some other live streaming platform that isn't Clubhouse and you want to get into the 100% Assurity Questions pick, get on over to Clubhouse, sign up, follow the show along, and then if I invite you up on stage, make sure you are unmuted and away we go. We say good evening to those of you watching the show tonight through one of our streaming video platforms. You can go to Facebook and Twitch slash BBQ Central Show. You can also head on over to YouTube slash RD Rempy where you can watch the show there. That room also has a chat room as we look at 
the poll question for the show this evening. Will you brine or inject or both to your turkey on Thursday? 55% of you now are saying that you will brine it. 18% say you will inject it. And 27% are saying that you will do both. So where there was a tie a little bit earlier in the show, brining is taking over with 55% of the vote. We'll see how that changes through the rest of the second hour here. We also say good evening to all of those using our audio streaming platform, Clubhouse. So if you'd rather hear us instead of watch us, Clubhouse is the way to do that. There's also a chat room in the Clubhouse app too. So if you want to chat along with some of the other fellow Clubhousers, you can do that. Coming up on the best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less is, hmm, oh dear. I think I screwed the pooch on this one, gang. Get that big stuff out of here. Now everybody's going to have to hang out for a hot second while I figure this out. Stand by. <sighs> right. That's right. Well, we figured it out. It's actually episode 256 coming to you. Given everything that's happened over the since Saturday morning, I didn't do the write-up for this yet. However, I quickly dashed over to my Dropbox, where executive producer of the show, John Solberg, slash Michigan Embedded Correspondent, drops all the finished shows and all of his production work in there, and we share a folder together. I only needed to see one word to take me all the way back to the topic du jour of Friday. And what would that be? Does anybody remember the show where I uttered these this word? Nadkins. Yeah. Nadkins. As in napkins for your nads. As in not feminine hygiene products, but male hygiene product for your balls, ladies and gentlemen. Get that big stuff out of here. I'm not sure if Nadkins is still an item that you can go out and buy anywhere. I don't, I'm not going to even bother firing up the Googles and going to Nadkins.com to see if that's something that a friend of mine might be getting during the holiday season. What's one to think? If I'm sitting at somebody's house for Christmas Eve or Christmas Day and I gift one of my best pallies, Nadkins, like so let's say I'm spending Christmas with Rusty and I am you know, give him a bottle of rub and give him something else really expensive and one of those gifts is a package of Nadkins. I mean, I would imagine anybody that gets that package, we're using Rusty as an example, he would be like, what is he saying? Is he saying that my nad smell? How would he know? He's never been around that general area enough to know if my nad smell or not. And meanwhile, I'm just like, hey, seems like a pretty cool gift. I'm just going to give this to all my guy pals. Whether they stink around that general area or not, Nadkins are the gift du jour for this holiday season. But you have potential of offending somebody. So if you're going to go to Nadkins, whatever website that is, again, I don't know if it's even still available, but assuming it is, this is striking a chord with you. You want to give it up to one of your best pals. Make sure you walk that line to know that this isn't a... Well, maybe it is. Maybe you're really good pals with your friend. I don't want to speak for anybody here. Maybe you got a pal that's got a really rancid sack and he needs Nadkins at the worst. Okay? Maybe that's it. I don't know. You're like, hey, pal, you got rotten crotch. Here's Nadkins. Merry Christmas. And everybody's going to thank us as long as you use these. Maybe you're that kind of a person. I would choose not to associate somebody that uh, with somebody that is overly crotch smelling, like on a consistent, but sometimes you can't help it. Other times, but consistently, 
Yeah, that's, you know, work on where your friend group is. You might want to thin the herd a little bit. Or maybe they're just a gas, no pun intended, and you want to keep them around. So what are you going to do? You've expressed, hey, maybe you should shower more than once. Try a little talcum powder down there around the balls. Now, slip them a mystery pack of nadkins. Why not? That could be it. We'll see how it goes. By the way, if you are going to go to Google and check this out because I'm not, if it's still a thing, please let me know. I would love to know if nadkins are a thing, but if you don't know anything about it, then you will learn about nadkins this coming Friday. What do you have to do in order to hear it? You have to be a member or a subscriber to the show podcast feed. And uh, you can do that by going to the website, the bbqcentralshow.com and clicking subscribe, not newsletter next to it, it says subscribe. And then you will find out all the ways you can subscribe to the show. And if you don't use a podcast platform, there is an email option. So you give it your email address. And then when the feed updates, it will send you an email to the latest edition of the show. And you can listen that way. So if you don't want to mess around with podcast players, fine. Know this. Come hell or high water on Friday, you're going to learn about Nadkins whether you want to or not. How about that? The embedded correspondents are ready to rock and roll at least. Yeah, there he is. Okay. Doug was blending into the background of his banner there. Lost him. Green Mountain Grill, some of the best pellet cookers out there on the market today. A couple different lines to choose from. A choice line, a prime line. If you're not somebody that needs all the bells and the whistles, the accoutrement, choice line. That's the one you want to do. Accommodates a lot of meat. Really great cooker. I have two in the backyard right now. I've had them for multiple, multiple years, 10 plus. They work really well, and that's all they do. They're just really well-working barbecue cookers. If you want to add a little money to that, go Prime Line. A little bit more of a robust build on the chassis. Got some extra stuff like internal meat probes. You got the Wi-Fi. You got app connectivity so if you want to adjust the temperature of your cooker up or down you can do it without having to go outside and adjusting it on your cooker you can do it right from your Shaw's lounge if you want to turn it off from the app you can do that if you want to turn it on from the app you can do that but make sure the cover's off what can't you do I don't know plus they have some great accessories that you can get at greenmountaingrills.com plus some other really cool companies make third party cool additions like Pimp My Grill. You should check those guys out too. They make some really great stuff for a lot of the Green Mountain Grill lines. However, only sold through dealers, so got to visit a dealer. GreenMountainGrills.com to find a dealer near you. Then go touch and feel and learn and educate. Talk to the sales guy out there. Once you figure out which one is best for you, take it home and know that you're going to have success right out of the back. Why? Because you were educated. No buyer's remorse here. They're not about that. GreenMountainGrills.com. That's GreenMountainGrills.com. We're back. The Embedded Correspondence right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Howard Stern, Jim Rome, Dan Patrick, and Greg Rampey. The Mountain Rushmore of talk show entertainment. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show. Welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by the Pit Barrel Cooker, the most unbelievable outdoor cooking device on the planet, currently available in three sizes, a host of accessories. Whether you're a beginner or a professional, it doesn't matter. It's a cooker you want to add to the arsenal. Visit pitbarrelcooker.com. Tell them the Barbecue Central Show sent you. And know this, in a week's time, not only will we have Chris Lilly for Big Bob Gibson's in the first hour and the second hour, we will have Noah Glanville, founder, co-founder of Pit Barrel Cook. So look forward to that. All right, gang, it is the fourth Tuesday of the month in the second hour, and that can only mean one thing. We race to the hotline and welcome back the gang, the embedded correspondence right here. Well, I hit the wrong button. There we go. Uh, right to the right of me, if you're looking at the screen, is Doug Scheiding from Texas, longest-running embedded correspondent directly below me, John Solberg from Michigan, the executive producer 
of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less. And then caddy corner down for me right below Doug is Rusty Monson, the pit master of Salt City Barbecue and the same named barbecue trailer, which we still have to do a interview before the year ends, Rusty. So I will hold you to that if I can remember from the great city of Utah, Rusty Monson is right there. So, gang, we have a new round of 100% assurity questions to get down on. So allow me to head on over to the clubhouse and see if we can't get Steve Schuyler up here to join us and he can give his answers to the five or six questions that I have going on. At this point, uh, I'm not sure if he's going to take the bait here or not. Steve, you're not there by any chance, are you? No, of course not. So uh, we'll see. Oh, wait, Steve, you're there? Yes, sir. Hey, all right. All right, keep your mic open. We'll be coming to you um, through rotation as we answer the 100% assurity questions. Uh, Steve, are you a fan of the show? Do you know how this works? I'm a fan of the show, but I don't know how this works. All right. Well, let me explain it to you very quickly. I will ask a question, and it will start with this. 100% yes or 100% no, blah, 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 Steve. And then you will say 100% yes, or you will say 100% no. That's all we're looking for. We're not looking for a long, involved answer. This is a whore's game, and we are trying to win. Got it. So, Steve, since you are up in the clubhouse, we will start with you this evening. 100% yes or 100% no. In general, turkey is overrated. In general, 100% no. All right. Get that big stuff out of here. John Solberg from Michigan, 100% yes or 100% no. In general, turkey is overrated. I'm going with Steve. 100% no. It is not overrated. Not overrated. Rusty, turkey overrated? Hell no. It's badass. Get that big stuff out of here. Doug, overrated? 100% yes. And I will round it out here, and I feel like Doug and I are curmudgeons from another mother. I agree. 100% yes. Turkey, far overrated. Nevertheless, we go to the next one. We'll stick with Doug. Doug, 100% yes or 100% no. Stuffing is the best side dish for Thanksgiving. 100% no, especially oh. if it has cornbread. Right. Especially if it has cornbread. Putting, putting an exclamation point on it. Rusty, 100% yes or 100% no. Stuffing is the best dish for Thanksgiving. It's the worst. Ooh. Number one worst. It's the worst. Wow. Smacking a double exclamation point on it. Steve Schuyler, stuffing is the best side dish for Thanksgiving. Hell no. Hell no. Wow. People outdoing themselves with exclamation points. John Solberg from Michigan, stuffing is the best side dish for Thanksgiving. 100% yes or 100% no. I am definitely the outlier. It is the only thing you need to have. <laughs> All right, and much like I was with Doug, I'm with John. Yes, stuffing is the best for Thanksgiving. No doubt about it. All right, next question. Number three. We'll stick with John on this one. John, 100% yes or 100% no? Competition barbecue will never recapture the popularity it once had a number of years back. It's one of those, I got to read the question again. <laughs> Uh, it it will never ever achieve the popularity it did. So what does that mean? Hundred percent, yes. It will never recapture. All right. Steve Skyler, competition barbecue will never recapture the popularity it once had a number of years ago. One hundred percent, yes. All right. Scary. We're coming to a majority. Rusty Monson, 100% yes or 100% no. Competition Barbecue will never recapture the popularity it once had a number of years back. Never, sadly. Wow. We're on our way to a quorum. Douglas. 100% yes. Wow. Well, it doesn't often happen, ladies and gentlemen. 
But I do believe we have what we call a five, Pete. I am with you guys 100%. Yes, it will never recapture the popularity it once had. By the way, it breaks my heart to say that because I thought maybe a year ago we were going to start trending back into that direction. But at least as we close out 2022, by the way, rapidly coming to a close, we're not going to be there yet. I'm holding out a monicum of hope, but not enough to swing me off the 100% yes answer that I just gave. All right, let's go to Rusty Monson to lead off this time. Rusty, 100% yes or 100% no. The majority of barbecue influencers on social media, no names please, are hacks. 100% no. Get that big stuff out of here. Douglas, barbecue influencers, on the whole, hacks. I changed my original answer, and I'm going to go 100% yes. Oh, he was a no to begin with. Wow. Well, we might have to dig into that uh, in the post-assurity question dig in there. Uh, John Solberg, 100% yes or 100% no. The majority of barbecue influencers on social media, no names please, are hacks. Doug is 100% right. <laughs> they absolutely are 100% hacks. <laughs> oh, my. Steve, barbecue influencers are hacks. Hack dead. Hack dead. Uh, I'm sorry, Steve. You broke up. Yes or no? Sorry. 100% yes. All right. Hack. Oof. All right. That, uh, now we bring it to Rusty. Did we start with you, Rusty? Yeah, but you didn't. Fin- you need to finish it. I will finish it. One hundred percent yes or one hundred percent no. The majority of barbecue influencers on social media, no names, please, are hacks. Yes. Am I a jealous bastard? Maybe a little. Maybe a little. But some of the stuff, all right, we're not going to dive into the weeds here on this one. All right, we'll go back with Steve to close it out. This is the last one. Steve, joining us through Clubhouse. 100% yes or 100% no. Thanksgiving is the best food holiday of the year. Question courtesy of Doug Scheid. 100% yes. Oh, right. John, yes or no? No. Rusty, yes or no? Nope. Nope. I'll go next and leave it up to Doug. I'm with you guys. Nope. Doug, to close it out, 100% yes or 100% no? And the question you asked, Thanksgiving is the best food holiday of the year. The answers have surprised me, but I'm a no as well. No. (laughs) All right, Steve. Well, we're not telling you you're wrong, but you're wrong. (laughs) Of course, I'm just kidding. Uh, Steve, appreciate you joining us here this evening. Have a great Thanksgiving, my friend. You as well. Thank you, guys. You got it. That's Steve joining us via Clubhouse. Let me see where we are time-wise here. All right, we got some time. Uh, Doug, I wanted to dig into one of the answers that you gave. Oh, all right. So uh, originally, you were on board that, uh, or you were against the majority of barbecue influencers on social media being hacks. You were going to go with a no, but then you changed to yes. What changed your mind? Mm. What drives me crazy is when people do briskets and they are shaped rectangularly, right? But the but the grain never goes from left to right or, or up and down. So they, what they do is they basically cut the brisket in half and not against the grain, and then they stack it on top of each other. You mean they're that, they're that cutting it to where they think the the flat runs out and where the point starts, and then they stack them on top yeah, of each other? They're, they're they're cutting it left to right in a rectangular and the grain goes from top usually from bottom left to top right yeah and they're just not they're not cutting against the grain what person in the right mind would do that other than to show a picture for instagram mm. so does that make them hacks 
Yes. All right. John, do you agree with that? I don't disagree with that at, at all, but I, I was looking at it a little <laughs> deeper. It's like, you know, when we say uh, the majority of influence are influencers are hacks, it's, you know, you just got to go look. I think that's a great point. There's a million points like that. It's about views. It's about free pit bosses. It's about free whatever they can get or trying to get, trying to get their, hey, you know, it's like, I don't want no names, please. Like, oh, I got this rub. I'm an info. I mean, it goes on and on and on for me. So um, I, I, I agree with Doug on that point as well. And you will not find many pictures that are not done that way on, in this day and age. John, and when I see it like Doug, I'm like, to follow up with you on that, if they were getting paid money, does that change it for you? If it wasn't, if it's not in kind rub or a cooker or whatever, that's one thing. But if it's straight up cash, does that make it different for you? It, it, it might make them no less a hack in my mind, <laughs> you know, just because they were getting paid. So, but uh, that, that's a good question. I'll have to look inward on that one. Mm. But a hack's a hack. It doesn't matter if they're getting paid or not. I don't know too many hacks that are actually getting paid other than with product. Rusty, did you say most of them were hacks too? Uh, I don't I don't think they are at all, right. actually. I, and, and I'm going to say because, yeah, they might be a little fluffy, but that's also people who are legitimate cooks using extreme filters on their food. To me, it's the same thing. You're trying to get a look and get someone's attention. But I think Susie Bullock proved that they're not and because these people are cooking – a lot of food and a lot of variety all the time. And they're, they're probably more versed in food than most of us because <laughs> it's hard job to be able to get up. Doug, uh, Doug knows this. He does it all the time. Get up and cook food all the time for, you know, what you got going on. It's a hard, hard thing to do. It's a full-time job for some. So there's no way that they cannot be good at what they do unless they're complete, you know? And so the majority, no, I think they legitimately, if they start out hacks, they become uh pretty, I think pretty legit after a while because I mean, look at no one took Susie's uh, series on barbecue brawl and she almost won the damn thing. And it's because she's constantly cooking different food as opposed to brisket, pork, chicken, and ribs. I would like to say this because the more we're talking about, well, the more that I'm throwing out the word hack and no names, please, and majority, we're not naming anybody by name. So perhaps it would show a lot more testicular fortitude on my part to have worded the question, who do you think the biggest hack is to start naming names? Uh, and I, we're not going to do that. However, I don't think it's fair now that I'm thinking about it in hindsight, that this was probably a great question to ask because all we're doing is leaving it up for somebody to say, they're probably talking about me or they're probably talking about me. Um, Rusty's mentioned Susie. Like that, that would be a name that never crosses my mind as somebody who's a hack for any number of reasons, the history, the company she worked with, the products, and the content that she's generated. But when I look at... So here's... I'm going to throw out a name here, and this is just to ballyhoo around the dais. I think... His, uh, I don't know what his real name is, but I think his Instagram name is, uh, oh crap. John, who's the guy you did the big hot dog thing with? What's his name? Ma Max? I have no is idea. Is it Max something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I could, I could check. Oh, if you crap. Like. All right. I, so look, the, I mean, there is no doubt. There's no doubt that this guy has a huge following. I have no idea how engaged they are. I don't dig that deep into it. And all I'm trying to do in my mind when I watch his stuff is go, what are you doing? Are you making this stuff to be outrageous? And if so, why? Is it just to continue to build the Instagram following? Is it because you're building towards releasing a cookbook or you might be in talks about signing a cookbook and you're going to be able to leverage your audience to the publisher to get a, a big cash advance. If that's the case, you know, I'm a business guy. I'm for profit. I'm as capitalist as they come. I, I get it. I don't see that happening. I wish I could remember this guy's name. His production value is high. His creativity is incredible. It's just like the weirdest shit I have ever seen not shit like it's bad, but it's just like conceptually crazy. So uh, it's very creative, but
But I just don't know what he's doing. A Google would probably fall into this category as well, you know, with his uh, dry aging of, uh, you know, in spaghetti o juice, in duck fat turds, in whatever else he's doing. The, the audience is there. The views are there. I just, I don't know where it becomes hacky. That's what I'm saying. Am I making sense there, Rusty? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But I don't think the majority of them are doing that. Anybody else want to add anything before we move on? The backy there, chef. There's layers. The, <laughs> the what? Yeah. The backy chef is that Instagram oh. channel. The backy chef. Backy chef. Okay. I thought you said the baggy chef. I was like, oh, that could be me. <laughs> All right, uh, so, and then let's see. Was there one other competition stuffing? No, okay, that was it. All right, so uh, we're going to stop here, and then we will get into the McRib breakdown, which I know everybody's excited about. We'll be able to really dig deep onto that, and then we can talk a little bit about the Beyond Meat potential fiasco that was going on over the course of the last month. So stick around for all of that uh, before we talk about that. We'll talk about Primo Grills because what do we love about ceramic cookers? We love that they can get rip-roaring hot for the high-temperature grilling of steaks and other thin cuts. However, we also love that they're very fuel-efficient. Fuel misers, one might say. We love that you can achieve the low and slow temperatures for those traditional barbecue meats. What's missing from the everyday lineup of ceramic cookers? The real ability to do two Zone cook, true two zone cook. Two zone cooking very important to both professional and backyard cooks alike. It's the best way to manage a fire and cook with confidence. However, getting a two zone fire and a round ceramic cooker is not very realistic. Why? Because it's not round. And a Primo grill and their game changing oval design. The shape gives you the ability to execute a two zone setup that you desire. It also gives you the other ceramic grill benefits as well. When you break it down, there's more than 60 different ways to configure the Primo cooker, so you're only limited by your imagination and your culinary wild. Of course, this year, last year, coming out with a host of accessories to complete that Primo grill experience. So if you want a Primo grill rotisserie, they have it. If you want a Primo grill pizza accessory, they have that as well. Whole drip pans, half drip pans, rib racks, all the fun stuff. Get it over at primogrill.com or a dealer near you. Much like Green Mountain Grill, Primo Grill's only sold through dealers. So find a dealer near you. Check them out. See all the sizes of ovals that they have. And then pick the one that is best for you. And then hook up with the accessories. The bottom line is this. Best ceramics in the biz. Patented technology. True two-zone cooking capabilities. Multiple sizes. Yes to all of that. And if you just have to have a round ceramic cooker, they have those as well. But we encourage you, as we do every week, to get the oval one. Even Meathead says the Primo ceramic oval is a game changer. Two-zone format. You can do it with the oval. Get the oval. Primogrill.com, the website. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram. And we'll be back with the embedded correspondence right after this. Stick around. Be right back. Let's get back to a guy who has more experience giving you his opinion than he actually has cooking. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. The popular Smoking with Smithfield grant program applications are currently live at smokingwithsmithfield.com. In order to help deepen prize pools, Smithfield once again will be awarding $3,000 to selected competitions. Applications are open until December 3rd. So that time is rapidly coming to a close. A couple weeks left to get them in. Also, Smithfield is once again sponsoring their Committed Cooks program in 2023, looking for teams to be committed to cook with Smithfield products during 2023 season. Participating teams receive swag kits, coupons, and surprises through the season. You can sign up at the same place that you would at the Smithfield grant, which is smokingwithsmithfield.com. All right, we're back with the embedded correspondence here. And... At the end of last month, gang, I said, we are throwing caution to the wind, out the doors, down the alley, whatever you want to put on top of this. Because what did we hear 
couple months ago. Well, the McRib is back out, much to my horror, much to Rusty's joy. But attached to that was this was going to be the farewell tour of the McRib, at least here in the States. They said if you wanted to have it every day, you were going to have to move somewhere in Germany where those particular McDonald's restaurants have all of the specialty stuff that McDonald's ever offered every day of the week and twice on Sunday. I don't think Rusty's committed to moving to Germany just yet. However, I said, hey, why don't we all go ahead to the McDonald's over the next four weeks, grab a McRib, and try it for the first time or try it again for the first time in years and see what we think about it. So let's go to the longest-running embedded correspondent, Doug Shiding from Texas. Doug, let's start with this. When was the first time? What was the very first time you ever had to make rib, and how long has it been since you've had it? When did we do the last survey of this thing? Was we it never two did three it. years ago? We've never done oh, a McRib survey. It. Oh, no, never. I would never allow it. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. So the answer would be, I, th- I think I've had one, and it was probably three to four years ago. Hmm. All right, so within the last four years of you consuming that one, what did you think of this one? And give us the whole breakdown of the McRib. The when I went and ordered, I went through the drive-through. It was four fifty-five for one, and then she said, "Oh, you, it's for six bucks. You can get two. And I'm like, <laughs> "Okay, I'll get two, but throw in a basket of fries with that because I just wanted to have a backup." Your picture that you posted, it looked huge. When I got it, I was like, "Man, this is smaller than I really expected." That's what she said. But sauce, the sauce was not bad. The sauce was not bad, but it was on the McRib and not on the top of the bun. And I got pickles and onions, Mm. so that blocked all the sauce on the top of the bun. Um, The bread was thinner than the actual McRib itself, and it was very chewy. Pickle is the primary flavor, then onion. I tasted the McRib by itself, and there was no discernible flavor this year. The last time mm. I remembered it kind of being uh, salty and, and tasting having more the texture of like a breakfast sausage. <laughs> so I, I didn't really get much of a flavor. It was like, you know, chicken or turkey, if you will. Um, it was a chore to eat the second one the next day. Um, I ate most of the meat and then threw the rest to the deer. Doug, you but, let um, it sit overnight what? and went back to it? Well, I put it in the refrigerator, of course. Gross. It was the second one. I, I mean, it was the second one. Wow. You, you can't were dedicated. Eat, you can't eat two, that's for sure. You can throw it out. So I, I, tr- I tried it again. It was a chore to eat it. You know, it's good it's once a year because you forget how bad it was after a year and you say, ah, oh, it can't be that bad. Well, it is. Huh. That's right. my review. So not a fan. All right, now let's go for potentially competing thought and go to Rusty Monson from the great city of Utah, a well-known honk of McRib. Uh, Rusty, we know the last time you had McRib was the last time that they were available. So being a, I don't know if you remember from a year ago or not, was there any discernible difference between the last ones and this one? And then give us the full breakdown. So I can do it both with giving the breakdown. Um, but yeah, last year, man, it was the bun was soft. The the McRib was flavorful. It's got a good consistency. I feel like there was more barbecue sauce on it or something, man. It was fantastic. I loved it. Last year was fantastic. I went this year and I got to because I was so excited. Not because it was a deal, just because I'm about to eat this bitch. And I was going to have two back to back because I was so excited. So I don't go to my new normal McDonald's. I grab one. I take my first bite and go, oh, that's not good. And I take my second bite and go, it's still not good. This is weird. So I eat it. <laughs> Get to the second one. Not good. Like the consistency's off. The flavor wasn't there at all. And it didn't taste right. I'm like, this doesn't taste like I'm a rib. So my thought was, listen, I didn't go to my normal McDonald's. Let me go in a couple of days to my normal McDonald's. And I did. And I went to my ladies who I go to, you know, once or twice every morning when I'm heading to work. And I got one, just one, because I was scared now. And I bit into it right away. And sure enough, man, it sucked. Uh oh. It wasn't good. And I was like, this really this sucks. And so my whole my only thought is this. It is their last tour. 
And I know that because they're trying to turn people like me off. So we will stop oh. talking about it. And shut up. That's my theory. Wow. So you think they're trying to chase you off, detox you uh, as they are making their last rounds? Yep. So we'll stop writing in All right. and emailing them to bring it back. Wow. But perhaps not a bad uh, effort in their marketing department. John, we go to you. Uh, last time you had one, if you can remember it, uh, how it compares to the one you just had, and then the full breakdown. I'm going to go all the way back to my youth when the thing was new. It was I'm like 84 quickly and say, yeah, I was around. <laughs> you know, I, was, I was, you know, I was keeping the commies off your doorstep, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> that's like, <laughs> the, uh, it was amazing sandwich back then. It was absolutely fantastic. All right. It was great. A year, and I, I want to be a fan of the p- fans of the McRib. I'm not a hater on it at all. I, I roll with Rusty. A year or so ago, I got one. Was not the sandwich of my youth. Hmm. Had an awful lot of sauce on it. Too much sauce for me, but the bun was soft. The meat had a nice texture. It was an okay sandwich a year ago. I, mine this year, it was not so good. The texture was not good in the meat. There was not a lot of sauce on it, which I was actually relieved because it was over sauced the last time. I think the the pickles and the onions had a nice balance, but the meat wasn't, it was just not the same patty. And, it, and, and I just said, I'm not going to try it twice. I thought it was dry. I thought the bun was dry, small this year, totally different than last year, total opposite direction. Not a good sandwich. So many other better choices for mm. McDonald's for money. Uh, And now that brings it to me. I don't remember the last time that I had a McRib. It was probably sometime in high school. So that would go ahead, Doug. You're on mute. Sorry, I apologize. I have a rant of you from November of 17, 2020 on how much you hate the McRib. Because I had just recently had one. Yes. Huh. Yes. That's, I think we've done this before, but, but I could be wrong. Cause I think that was the only time I, well, had it, even, but. even at 2017, that's five years ago. I have no, yes. uh, culinary recollection of the McRib, uh, from that point. So it obviously didn't make a positive mark in my brain to want to remember it and chase it like Rusty was. I mean, Rusty chased twice. He was going law of diminishing return and it was playing up textbook each one worse than the next. So uh, I went to the McDonald's that was right by where my Peterbilt uh, corporate office is. And on the takeout menu, here's what it looks like. I mean, this thing looks majestic. It's got what I would call aesthetically attractive onion slivers on it, although I would never eat those. And you can see the pickles underneath. You have a, what I would call nicely sauced McRib meat uh, patty on there. And then the, the special bun that they use. And then this is the actual container that it came in. It was, mine was heavily sauced. I don't know if you can see it right there, but there's already sauce from my finger um, right below the McRib box right there. And you can kind of see it. I don't know. Oh yeah. uh, You can kind of see it right here on the box. Uh, So that got there when they were closing it, open it up to reveal. Yes. an overly sauced uh, McRib patty. You can see the stains on either side of the box. There's also one on the top lid there uh, towards the back. And then with the top off, uh, I mean, again, I don't rem- I, I thought, I thought, I remembered it being a lot more rectangular. You can see here where the edges kind of are poking in, then they're coming out, then they're going in uh, like diamond shapes uh, or fencing or something along these lines. And then you have this bullshit thing that's supposed to be a rib uh, that went through the press there but it is it is anemic it's thin it's not substantial and uh, i think that was uh the last picture that i had there so that's fine so that's what mine looked like aesthetically it wasn't bowling me over by any stretch of the imagination and uh, in the end what do i take away from it The best thing about the McRib, the best thing, running away with it, hands down, stone cold, lead pop, uh, lead pipe winner, the bun. (laughs) Look, what do we always say? If the bun is the best thing about the sandwich, you got a piece of shit sandwich on your hands. But it was great. It was soft. It was delicious. I liked the 
whatever the hell's on top of it. It had a nice little textural uh, crunch on it to some kind of seeds of some shit. Or, I don't know what the fuck it is. And then the, the, the meat itself was just not even there. It like, it was there texturally kind of like a, not a stiff board, um, but like a, like a sponge, like the old square sponge that you used to wash your dishes with, like that kind of a texture. Um, it didn't like uh, soak the spit out of my mouth, but it, it just wasn't, if it wasn't there, I don't even know if I would have missed it. I could have eaten the bun and barbecue sauce. I could have had a barbecue sauce sandwich and it might've been better because I kept waiting for some kind of either real pork or fake pork flavor to come over breakfast sausage. I think like Doug had mentioned earlier, but it wasn't there. And the sauce, eh, I mean, I didn't really detect liquid smoke, which really would have been terrible. However, due to my aversion of onions, I specifically ordered no onions. However, they took that to mean no onions and pickles, which is a shame. <laughs> Because I love McDonald's pickles. I used to eat McDonald's pickles when I worked there in the morning when we were making uh, breakfast slash lunch changeover. Those were delicious. But I, I'm, I'm remiss that I didn't have the, the pickles because John kind of plays them up that they, they worked and paired well with all this stuff. But, I mean, in the end, it's just bad. And I would hate to think that Rusty's onto something here where McDonald's has put out an inferior product. However... I can't discount that because unlike any other year when this thing has rolled out and been on its way for its six week run or seven week one, I haven't heard anybody talk one peep about the McRib this year other than it's going away. Nobody's posting pictures on YouTube about I got my McRib. It's the best thing ever. Uh, all that stuff. Nobody said anything about it. In fact, if I didn't make this mandate, I would have forgotten that it was available and it just would have went away forever. And we'll see what happens for here. Let's go quickly back around the room just for shits and giggles. Doug, after December, whatever the cutoff date, we will never see this sandwich again. Yes or no? No. Oh. Get that big stuff out of here. John, we will never see this sandwich again after the cutoff. No. Mm. Get that big stuff out of here. Rusty, we will never see this sandwich again after the cutoff this year. That that made me sad, John. It sounded like uh, your your friend was going away forever. <laughs> no, it's gone. It's gone, man. It's, I, gone. I, it's true because I they're they're trying to get us away. Wow, they're trying to get us out of it. I. I'm going against the grain. I think that it is, this has been such a success. Early 80s, maybe late 70s, but early 80s for sure. I think 84. I don't think they're going to take it away. I think they're telling us much like a Kiss reunion tour. I think this thing is going to, it might be gone for a year, but in two years time, it they might Take it out of retirement and trot this bitch back around one more time. I think this thing, we have not seen the last of this. Doug, go ahead. I, I agree with you. It was a double negative question. It oh. said, don't see it ever again. Doug, so agree. I, 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 All right. Then we I, have to go I, back I around. We, no, I got. Maybe, it, will, it was a double negative. All right, I'm we, sorry. Maybe I need to have a professional question writer coming in and stop working off the top of my head. Do, uh, John, did you answer the question? the way you wanted to answer it. Right. We're up against the clock. The sandwich will be back. I agree with you. Okay. We'll be back. Yes. Rusty, it's hit, gone hit forever. Let's go. Yeah, it's gone forever, man. Oh. Uh -oh. Wow. Get that right. stuff Rusty here. knows best. All right, guys, uh, before we head out of here, we'll do a little promotion time. Oh, by the way, the other mandate this month was for us to find Beyond Meat seared steak tips. For me, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city, a mecca of culinary treats. Oh, oh sorry. None for me. Couldn't find it. Couldn't track it down. Looked online. Called around. Nothing. Rusty, could you find it? No. I, I didn't look too hard to be fair. I did not find stuff out of here. Doug, could you find it? No, and I tried three times. Get that big stuff out of here. John, could you find it? 
No, but found a whole lot of other cool stuff that we could talk about at some point. <laughs> well, hopefully, I'm not going to say we... Go, well, let's conti- let's put this on the back burner for next month. We'll continue to try and find it. If one of us finds an outlet, let everybody else know. If we have... Maybe it's a national chain that we all have access to, and we'll be able to, to figure it out. But let's table it for now. Continue the search. And if we all can have access to it by the end of December then uh, that's where we'll lead after the 100% assurity questions. Uh, Rusty, we go to you. Time for promotion. What are you up to? Check out the Pinmasters podcast, guys. We're taking a break for the holidays, but you can listen to a lot of cool stuff on our backlog. So check it out. All right. John, what are you promoting? Best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less. We don't take breaks for holidays. You can catch us every Friday in the podcast feed over at the No days off. No days off. Uh, Doug, what are you up to? In two weeks, I'll go to E3 Meat Company for a fundraiser on human trafficking with uh, Navy SEALs. And then I'll be on the Hall of Fame uh, discussion on the baseball and barbecue coming up later this later in December. Uh, just to be clear for anybody that didn't understand what Doug was saying, Doug is not raising funds to promote trafficking. Again, no, he, he didn't make that against clear human against human trafficking. Thank you. So Thank we just you. want to make sure in case I don't want Jeffrey Epstein emails coming my way. We're not about that. We are always against human trafficking, no matter what. Against. Against it. That's right. So uh, as always, guys, appreciate it. Have a great Thanksgiving on Thursday, and we will see you in December as we close out the year. There they are, the embedded correspondents. Doug Scheiding from Texas, John Solberg from Michigan, and Rusty Monson from the great city of Utah. Before we get ready to close up shop here this evening, let's talk about Vortic watches. Back in the day, watches were made to be worn in the pocket after World War II. Wrist watches came into vogue, and pocket watches quickly became an afterthought, finding their ways into sock drawers and scrap heaps. Quite simply, a tragedy. Enter Vortec Watch Company, helping bridge the gap between America's storied watch manufacturing past and bringing it to the present day, where wristwatches are now finding incredible popularity once again. Here's the coolest part. Each watch that Vortec makes is unique and one of a kind. Vortec found on the motto that America wasn't assembled. It was built. Check out VorticWatches.com for more information. At last check, those special military edition watches are all sold out. However, there are still a handful of the traditional military versions. Uh, That would be iteration number four. So go to VorticWatches.com slash military, and you can get your hands on one of those really cool Grand Navigator watches. True 24-hour phase. Really cool. VorticWatches.com. That's VorticWatches.com. We're back to wrap the show right after this. Stick around. Be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Whole packers, full racks, legs and thighs, injecting butts. If you've never heard this before, you might think you found the best triple X show ever. Let's get back to the most homoerotic host out there today, Craig Rimpy. And we thank the embedded correspondents for joining me the last two segments. A great 100% assurity pick round with a special guest from the clubhouse, Steve Schuyler. And then we dug into some other topics, not the least of which was a in-depth evaluation of what is supposed to be the retiring McRib. Everybody trashed it, even Rusty. Had two, said they were bad, ate them back-to-back, and then chased with a third one a little bit later, and he said even that one sucked. Of course, no surprise that John, Doug, and myself also decided to take crap on that one, but that's just the way it is right now, and we'll see if that one comes back. Three out of the four of us thought that one will be coming back at some point. However, Rusty is so disenchanted with his crappy McRibs this year, said this could be it, and he has no faith that it's going to be coming back. So we'll see how it all ends up here. All right, let's go ahead and get out of here all the way back in the first hour. We had the $200 Pepper Mill grind off with Dr. Barbecue Ray Lampy. We had the Black Rain. We had the Pepper Cannon. This one is $200 at mankitchen.com. This one, 
is currently sitting at 150 bucks, although it is a regular retail of $200, but you can get it at a $50 discount. Ray Lampy leaning more towards the Black Rain. I was leaning a little bit more towards the Pepper Cannon. However, can you really go wrong with either of them? No. Who's going to step up and buy both of them and be like me? I didn't buy either of them. But who would else would own both of them? That's what I want. That's the question of the day. Uh, after Ray, it was Derek Riches, DerekRiches.com, talking about turkey stuff, talking about if there is a market for $200 pepper grinders. And we agreed that next month we will definitely get to the blue steak talk. Also, during the conversation tonight, we talked about the internal temperature of pork ribs. So you can find that at his website, DerekRiches.com. I subscribe to taking the temperature of your ribs at this point. So try it out if you haven't done it. Then, of course, second hour was the embedded correspondence. They are always here at the end of every month, the fourth Tuesday in the second hour, talking about assurity questions and other such live fire barbecue topics. Big show planned for you next week. Chris Lilly, full first hour. Noah Glanville, full second hour. Both of them are 2022 Barbecue Central Show Guest Hall of Famers, so we'll talk all about that and get the backstory as well. So how do I always leave you? September 11, 2001, I will never forget. To my wife, Becky, I am thinking about you. And I hope everybody that is listening and watching here this evening have a great Thanksgiving. Hug the ones you love. And we'll see you back here next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. I am your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now. Yo, pot! This is Meet Mitch, and you're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Bomb.